afternoon. I'm Jeff Hurley. I'm the MVPN PSC coordinator here at Camp Vegan with the Andrews Center. I came, we're back here with our mental health moment. I came to you the last few weeks. We started with an introduction and what RAP is, how it's used, and what you can use it for in your personal life. We started with the five concepts, and last week we studied hope, or we gave a brief introduction of what hope is and how that concept can be applied towards RAP. We're going to start with the second key concept this week, which is personal responsibility. And just like last week, I always like to start with what that general definition is. Personal responsibility is the idea that human beings choose, instigate, or otherwise cause their own action. And a corollary idea is that because we cause our actions, we can be held morally accountable or legally liable. Personal and mental health, I like to take that definition and then make it make sense to me and others. Personal responsibility is the spark that allows help to help. A flaw, I believe, in the mental health model is that we are in denial about our own personal responsibility when it comes to our recovery. Mental health is not something that's hardwired at birth, but it's more of a set of learned skills uh, that we develop over our life as we encounter trauma, um, we get burnout, anything that takes us out of that norm of everyday life. We presume that happiness is effortless for the normal brain. In other words, because I'm not happy or I'm not in my normal state of mind or I'm having a mental health crisis, there's a lot of times there's this belief that I'm going to go here and they are going to help me. I'm going to go see Jeff. I'm going to go see a counselor. I'm going to go to a peer group. They are going to help change what is wrong with me. But at the end of the day, our happy brain chemicals, our dopamine, our serotonin, our, our oxytocin, our endorphins, they've evolved to do a specific job and not and not flow all the time like they're there to be used when they're used they're a triggered reaction so they're designed to award survival actions things that we do that we take for us for survival and then they quickly hit they give us that reward and then they retreat back to where they came from so in other words you've got to do more of those things to get more of those reactions in other words you have to trigger that action so when you expect happiness to come from the system you have less reason to take steps that would trigger that reaction. So in other words, if I'm going to this peer group and I expect them to make me happy, that peer group in essence is not necessarily going to trigger that thing that's going to make your brain reward you and make you feel that sense of happiness. So the brain's going to keep doing what the job was designed for. It monitors your needs. It sends distress signals when you're, not, when you're ignoring those needs. So you could have the best support in the world, you could have the best rap groups, you could have the best rap plan, the best peer support groups, and it won't, help, it won't truly help until you decide what changes need to happen in your life and take steps to make them happen. There's a reason that personal responsibility is one of those key concepts in recovery. It involves taking action, doing what needs to be done to get well and stay well. It's not easy. It can take time. When you take ownership of your life and your future, you gain back control of your life. Remember that you are an expert on you. Please join us next week for another mental health moment when we cover the third key concept in rap. And please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.